Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and today's soap is another soap that is in my series of soap inspired by famous artists. And I don't know why I held off until now, but Henri Rousseau has been one of my favorite artists for such a long time. I've actually looked through my portfolio and found all these paintings that I did based on his style. So ever since I was a kid, I was looking through the P section of the encyclopedia under paintings and I would find all these paintings and I would look at them and Henri Rousseau's are one of the ones that I was always enchanted by. I like this sleeping gypsy and all these rich jungle forms. So when I moved to San Diego I had access to the San Diego Zoo and I would go there often to make sketches and take photos so that I could come home and put them all together in these paintings. So I'm going to show you a couple of those before I get to the soap. This first one is a portrait of my iguana that I had and um, I, he really deserved a special portrait all on his own. So a lot of these leaves came from pictures and photographs that I took at the zoo, put them all together in this painting. And then I decided that I really liked the idea of the, the nativity scene. So I decided that I'd never seen one placed in the jungle. And so I did this one, again, taking pictures of uh, plants in the San Diego Zoo and putting them all together. And Henri Rousseau was the same way. He would often um, go to the zoo and botanical gardens to look at the plants and, and trees, and then he would include them in his um, paintings. And then I did one just called Rain with this um, fascinating animal called the Okapi that I saw at the San Diego Zoo as well. Another jungle-like form. And then this is one of the few paintings that I actually included myself in there. Um, so you can see me sitting on this couch in the middle of this lush jungle and this um, wild cat looking the other way. And then finally I'm showing you this one called Jungle Evening. I wanted that to be a little bit more serene because it was happening in the evening. So anyway, here's um, a look at how I put together my Rousseau soap. And the Taiwan swirl worked out perfectly for this because I wanted something that was possible and to simulate the leaves and then that blue sky that seems to be in most all of Rousseau's paintings. So let's get on with the color tutorial and then on with the making of the soap. Okay, I'm going to start at the top and work my way to the bottom. Um, Rousseau was very pictorial and uh, he worked with figures, did people, and little dogs, and a very playful, naive, naive sort of way. I'm going to treat his work like um, an abstract. It's very difficult to capture the figure drawings and depictions in a soap. So I'm taking the basic elements of these artists' work and translating them into soap art. So um, the formula to a lot of um, Rousseau's work, and I hate to reduce it to a formula, but there are some sort of rules that he set up for himself that uh, he followed and that's why he has such a recognizable style. So um, he, he had access to botanical gardens and uh, trees and zoos and he did a lot of, spent a lot of time taking sketches and bringing them back with him to translate into his paintings. So um, I really enjoyed his paintings from a very early age when I was looking in the actual hard copy encyclopedias I would look at his paintings and want to do paintings like his. Um, the kind of paintings that really intrigued me were the ones that were very um, meticulous. So the more work that these artists put into details, the more I really seemed to enjoy them. And I would copy uh, these artists and make my own paintings. Sometimes I try to get as exact as I could. Um, and that really taught me how to really look at details. So I really enjoy Henri Rousseau. So I'm coming up with just the right green. And uh, so I already showed you some of the paintings that I've done. And a lot of those came from source material that I took at the San Diego Zoo. San Diego Zoo has, I believe, more different types of plant species, um, more than the animal 
collection that they have there. And it's beautiful and I can take all kinds of pictures that I can bring home and put into my paintings in the past. I haven't had as much time to do paintings as I would like, but I hope to get back to it. At least I've got what I can do with soap and art there because if I don't see the creative aspect of something, I kind of lose interest. That's just how I'm wired. So I'm working from the top down. This is how my soap is going to be. I've, I've got a, a blue that I've added some white to. In the soap, I'm going to add some titanium dioxide to one of my lightest blues. And then this is a one of my favorite greens. Um, it's a pistachio green mica from Rustic Essentials, but for the sake of doing this with watercolor, this is some um, yellow mixed with green and some white. And for this, I, I put a little bit, just a little bit of brown in there to make it a little bit more olive in color. So I think this, I want a little bit more green. These little shapes, I don't know where they came from. Um, just what I decided to do there. And then I'm going to make mix up a little turquoise. My darkest color, instead of using black, to get a little more depth, because I'm limited to only four colors in this painting. Um, I've got to sort of mix some things differently. So instead of adding black, which Rousseau did use, I'm going to make a mix of black and turquoise to get my deepest color. That'll keep the soap more bright, but it also, since I'm only using four colors, I've got to sort of cheat and get as many, get as much use out of these four colors as I possibly can. So that's the color scheme, and I'm going to do a Taiwan swirl. Um, that's nothing new, but I thought, wow, that approach to swirls is going to help me make these um, jungle-like foliage that uh, Rousseau is very famous for without having to worry about drawing in every single leaf. I also wanted to add that one of the reasons why this particular color scheme works well together is that they're all related. Um, all of these colors have blues in them, so they can um, hold together pretty nicely because Green is a combination of blue and yellow, basically. So all of these have a blue um, part to them, and they're also graduated from light going darker for the most part. Um, yeah, I want to say that too. And um, let's get on with the soap making now. Everything's at about 80 degrees, and I'm blending my oils and clays and some goat milk. That's all incorporated. And here's my lye. I'd like to give that a good stir first. That looks emulsified. So let's get my fragrance in there. It doesn't accelerate or discolor, so I'm happy about that. And we'll blend that. That looks good. And stir that well. Get the edges. And then I'm going to get this poured into my color. So let's see. I'm going to do it in the order uh, that I'm going to line them up in the mold. And this is a very light blue. I added some titanium dioxide to that as well. And then my, one of my favorite greens, pistachio green from Rustic Essentials. I'll probably need more, but I'll pour some more in there afterwards. 
And then is my combination of greens here. Just wanted the, just the perfect green, so I mixed some things together there. And my darkest is some, uh, some black onyx and uh, turquoise. I didn't really want it to be black, but I wanted it to be dark. And just a little touch of orange. Do you find that when you want to just make a little bit of one color, you end up overdoing it anyway? I tend to do that. So that, this time I actually made a little bit of that orange. I'm going to have some leftover soap batter. It won't fit in the mold, but I always run short of one of the colors when I put it in the dividers. So I can always um, just add it to another mold, which I have handy. Sometimes I have to pour awkwardly so that you can see what's going on here. Okay, let's blend these up. Start with my light blue. That's a great light blue. I'm going to stir that out also. And my pistachio. Green and the orange. I'm going to stir that more. I don't want that tiny amounts tend to solidify pretty quickly. So give these a quick stir. Nice and liquid. Spilling over the edge. That's a nice consistency. And to pour into molds, I find that I don't really want it too watery. It slows down the leaking on the bottom between the dividers. It's a little hard to gauge how to mix colors because once it's hit by the blender, it can change, so I'm really careful when I'm adding the dark colors like uh, black onyx, uh, activated charcoal to a color because it can turn to absolute black really quickly. And finally this orange that I gotta stir up a little bit more. But I hit it with the blender just briefly so it would stay liquid like this. When you agitate just a small amount of soap, it can saponify more quickly. So that's good. All right, so let's get the mold ready. Okay, the first thing to go, make sure you can see, is this light blue. I'll add more later, followed by the pistachio. Let me stir that out. I'm stirring it out because I want it to pour in that narrow little space, and it's hard if it's goopy. This is followed by my green. I'm going to stir that also. And lastly, Give this a stir too. My darkest, it's like a 
shade of a dark shade of turquoise. First, I want to drop some of this orange right there. Just a little ribbon of that. And I'm going to take a chopstick and kind of poke that in there. Just fill that up. Fill up my blue to the top. And it's okay if it goes to the top because once I take the dividers out, the soap level will drop. And then That's good. Let's pound this down. Check this needs a little more. I could put it in the wrong one, but that's okay. All right, so let's take the dividers out. Everything's really slippery too, so. Sometimes I feel like it's not even worth scraping these off because I don't want to damage what I've tried to separate here. This is uh, Jamaica Me Crazy from Nature's Garden. I really love this. So it's one of my favorite scents and I've not used it a lot either. One more to go. So you think I'd be more concerned about this little mess here, but I happen to know when I'm looking when I'm looking at these uh, photographs of Henri Rousseau's jungle paintings that I'm trying to approximate what he did in those paintings, and he wasn't um, he was looking at other details. So to get straight lines like this is not really what I want anyway. So I want to get the appearance of grasses and shrubbery. So I thought this swirl that you've all seen before would be perfect to do a soap that's inspired by Henri Rousseau. And he often had these light blue skies. And 
and the orange is just typical of his wanting a little bit of a sun, perfect round sun in the middle of the sky. He was primitive. He was a primitive artist, which means he didn't really have a lot of formal training, and he really painted like a kid, like a child, which added to his charm. So let me turn that down a little bit, clean it up, and of course I'll be cutting this a little bit differently so that every bar has this design on top, like that. The top is going to be the only bars that have the texture of this swirl, but what we should see in the other bars when we cut it is the same uh, color swirl. So yeah, I'm happy with those colors, and if you hold it this way like the bars will be, it is supposed to be reminiscent of the grasses growing up into the sky. So I'm going to fill my round molds with the leftover soap batter. And I'm also going to scrape off some soap from the dividers so don't waste anything. I'll just show you a little bit of this. It's not the most interesting thing to watch, but I will show you what these look, look like when they come out of the mold. Okay, these have been in this mold for a couple days. Just pop those out and I'll slice them and use these as samples. It sure smell good if you haven't tried this to making me crazy fragrance. It's pretty awesome. Slice through one, see what it looks like. Nothing too special. The top is nicer, but I'm glad it has more than one color in it. I like the texture of the top. So there's enough of that. Otherwise, it's going to be a very long video just to show you that I'm using all my soap. Okay, we'll get back to the main bar. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut the loaf into two and three quarter lengths. And I've got the soap on a low table. I'm looking straight down on my knife. The camera is a little bit to the side so I can get my eyes right over this. And I find that I can make a straighter cut that way, making sure the knife is perpendicular to the table. That's what I want to do. I'm going to do all these first and then I'm going to cut them into bars. And the idea is to get this design on all of the bars inside. I tried to fit this on my wire cutter and it just won't work. But I got my trusty pink knife again. If you look at my older videos, this is what I used exclusively to cut the soap. Okay, so these are all cut. And now I'm going to bring in my cutter. Okay, let's cut these into bars now. So there's the side that gets the texture, because that was the former top. And this is what it looks like on the inside. And I just wanted a touch of orange because that's what Henri Rousseau would often do in his paintings. He would 
or just a touch of orange and most of the painting would be filled with these green lush jungles and it's really meant to be viewed like this this one's gonna be just as is just a little drop of orange there let's cut it this way Those little curves are nice. Little stripe of orange there. This is that great scent of to make me crazy. That would be appropriate for this bar. Somewhat comical thing is when I'm thinking about these um, inspired by other artist bars, I can't help but think what I should set them with. So, <clears throat> so I'm making this Jackson Pollock soap and wondering what would a Jackson Pollock painting smell like? So sometimes I come up with something and most times I don't. That one has more orange. I lost some corners on this one. I was too anxious to see what it would look like and so probably cut into it or unmolded it a little too soon but most of the bars are intact this is probably my favorite bar so far just how each of those light Green areas are outlined with orange. I don't think I could have planned that if I tried. And the rest of the bars will have to be samples just because of the chunks that I lost there. Oh, should I cut that? I can trim these nice so that they're a complete design. Let's bring back this one. I like the, how this one came out too. So this is Clyde at Vibrant Soap. Thanks for watching again. I've got another Inspired By Soap coming up right after this one. And actually this one I knew I could do right away. My other one's a little more elaborate, so it took some time to cure part of the embeds. And as soon as I say goodbye to you today, I'm going to get on that one. So thanks for watching again. Thanks for subscribing and commenting. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye, everybody.